Hi there, welcome to Gong Show Garage. Today we're going to do an exciting video on the Goal Zero Yeti 400. Now this comes in a 250, a 400, and a 1250, I do believe. Incredible units. And the reason I'd like to do a video on this particular unit is they call it a solar generator. But what this thing can do is if you're in an RV, you can plug it in with the adapter cords that come with it into your car. It takes a little bit longer, but you can charge it off your car, RV, whatever you're using. You can use a 110 power supply to charge it, or you can plug it in with the adapter right into solar panels. Very versatile. I also would like to take a moment out to thank Ron and Deanna at Aztec. These people have been nothing but good to us. They actually supplied us with the cooler that was keeping our beverages cool during the summer last year. And we did a video on the cooler from them. So they lent us this one, and I'm actually really seriously considering of buying it. And the reason I'm really excited about this is I have the big 3,000-watt Canadian tire inverter. Now, that thing's great in an emergency. I can run my fridge off of it, but here's the drawbacks. Now, if we can come up here and take a look at this. See the voltage is 89? I've seen that drop as low as 85, and it'll go up to 96. It oscillates slowly, but yeah, overall voltage, it's telling me right now I'm getting 89 volts. If your components say it needs 105 to 120, when you give it less than the voltage that it requires, you're going to create problems, and one of them is heat. This particular unit is what I'm using to charge the goal zero, and I'm doing this twofold. The reason I'm doing it this way is, I'm trying to put this in a real-world application. I'm pretending that that's a generator, very similar to the champion that's right behind you. So if I was having an emergency disaster situation and I was running charging it off of here, that thing will probably do the same thing, give me about 87, 88, maybe 90, 96 volts. It'll fluctuate. This thing is rated at 100 to 240 volts. Now, obviously, I'm not giving it its full voltage, and it's still performing. It is getting warm. But it shows in a real-world application it is durable and it will perform. Now it's got what they call a pass-through. So you can actually run things off it. So let's say I'm doing my editing on my Gong Show Garage. I can plug in and I'm charging and I'm running off the air, but I'm using a pure sine wave. So if I'm running off my solar panels or my generator while I'm doing other things, I can still use this. Now. Some of the great features that I really like on this is it's got a display button. Now, the reason I like this button is because of the fact that if you don't need that light on and you're running off of this thing solo, look if I take that off, now we're running on it solo. I don't need that light on draining power, so I can turn it off. The other great saving on it is you can see each one of these I can isolate. So if I want to plug in my phone, Instead of using the 110 adapter, and I'll show you what I mean right here. Turn on the display. Zero in, zero out. When I turn this on, I'm now activating the inverter. The inverter is going from 12 volts to 120, 117, whatever it is. And it's actually consuming 4 watts. So if I have one of those adapters, I can plug it in. But I can turn that off, turn on the USB one run straight off the USB and charge my phone. And now it's drawing so little. It usually says one watt on my phone. But it draws so little. And then I can isolate that one off, turn that one off, and go over to here to this one, to 12 volt, which is a cigarette lighter, power port, whatever you want to call it. And it does come with the optional wires for out of here for 12 volts as well. So you've got three different ways of using power to go. 120, 5 volt USB, and these are high speed ports. Uh, they actually will do up to something like 10 watts, which is really impressive. And then you've got your um, power port here. It's got fans on either side to keep it cool, and it is very easy to work with. Like I said, you take the four Allen keys out, pop off the top, there's the battery, take the two terminals off the battery, pull the battery out. You could take it to a place like Discount Battery in Nanaimo. They supply all kinds of batteries. There's an AGM battery in here. It's not proprietary to this company, so you can put another battery in it. So that's another great thing of making it serviceable. 